<gasps> Heron woke and sat up, rubbing stiff fists into her eyes. Something different in that bark of yours, Black. Red coals glowed around the rock-heaped fire pit. Retrieving her darts, Heron rose and put on her parka. I'm coming, dog. Patience. <laughs> she shoved her feet into her boots, snugging the laces tight and binding her hair with a thong before pulling the hood closed about her face. Last, she picked up her snowshoes. Before leaving, she settled a couple of logs on the fire and ducked through the flap. Snow whirled from the darkness, a twisting cascade as she turned her head, half hesitant to undo the hood and free her ears. It wasn't good to get her head wet in this. She'd lose too much heat. She got a fix on the direction and hesitated. Even with her knowledge of the area, only a fool walked out in the wind-whipped storm. Still, something in Black's call goaded her onward. Bending, she tied her feet into the webbing of the snowshoes. Steadfast, dart knocked in her atlatl, she hiked up the slope into the brunt of the wind. Snow packed on the front of her caribou parka, forcing her to walk head down to keep the storm from blinding her. Rested though she was, her aged legs complained, aching in the deep drifts. For what seemed an eternity of night and wind woman's incessant harassment, she pressed on, following the voice of her dog. He bounded out of the dark, Heron's bitch white on his heels, as always, unsure. Black leapt away. Stolidly, Heron followed. She almost missed him. He lay half-buried, face cradled in his arms protected from the force of the gale. The snow around him had been packed by Black's feet. The dog looked up at Heron, tail swishing. There. Good boy, just like I trained you, huh? She bent down, squinting at his clothing in the blackness. One of the people here? She blinked, an eerie sense of familiarity taunting her heart. Frowning, Heron finally pulled his snow-encrusted arm away, looking at his slack features. When he didn't move, Heron kicked him in the ribs, hard. Come on, get up! She bent and wedged her arms under his and helped him to his feet, slipping on the irregularity of the mammoth trail they were standing on. Must have been the old bull headed for the hot springs. The boy had followed the tracks. Black! White! Home! Obediently, the dogs loped away toward Heron's shelter as the old woman helped the weak and nearly insensible young man to follow. Forever they walked. Even through the many layers of his clothing, Heron could feel the young man's bones. He was so starved. One foot at a time, they progressed, Black racing back and forth, leading the way, nose to the piling snow. An hour later, on the verge of collapse, they crested the ridge. The stranger collapsed, shivering violently. Ugh. Huffing condensed clouds of breath, Heron grabbed his hood and dragged him down the trail to the edge of her hot spring. You going to die after I've done all this work? Pulling off her mittens, she undid his parka with stiffened fingers, the dogs nosing about, anxious reading her disquiet. The stiff leather came off with difficulty. Heron turned her face away at the odor of him. Oh, child, you smell worse than dead musk ox. She yanked the last of his clothing off and stripped herself. Ugh. Then she dragged him over the rocks, heedless of his tender skin, until she had him in the warm water of her hot springs. In the darkness, steam swirled wildly in the wind, enveloping them in a blanket of moist warmth. She held him, feeling the strangeness of human flesh against hers. Keeping his head above water, she listened to his heart, to his breathing. What? What? Where? You're safe. Now tell me what you're doing here. He twisted weakly, turning his face to hers. Even in the darkness, she could read his confused eyes. She knew this young man. Something inside tensed. It's you? So, you finally come, 